I'm Jeffrey Smith, and I'm with Bethany, who basically runs the shop at the Institute for Responsible Technology. And if you've ever sent an email to InfoIt, she's the one that responded. So Bethany, can you name a question that people are asking more than once that we should answer now? Right. So a lot of people want to know what non-GMO crops are being sprayed with glyphosate just before harvest, and why are they being sprayed? All right, so for those that may be needing a little bit of background, glyphosate is the chief poison in Roundup. And we became very familiar with Roundup because Roundup ready crops are by far the vast majority of all GMOs. They're designed to be sprayed with Roundup at any time during the growing season, the crops don't die, all of the other crops around them, all the other plants around them, essentially weeds, are killed. So we were focusing for years, Bethany, on just Roundup sprayed on Roundup ready crops. And I was at a conference uh, years ago and a farmer said, you know, they spray Roundup on non-GMO crops at the end as a desiccant. And it was like this, you could, if there was a soundtrack to my life, that was like boom, 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 I went, like, what? And uh, I said, I need to know more about this. And I think I was filming for something and I wasn't able to jump in and understand the implications of it. So let's say you have a wheat field or, or oats or whatever, and you, you're going to harvest. Now, if you are in a cold climate and you have a short growing season and you want to make sure that everything is, is ripened in time, uniformly and quickly, you can spray glyphosate-based herbicides like Roundup and it'll force maturation because it's gonna kill the crop. So the crop, it's like, we're gonna die. Give all the energy to our offspring. They will carry on. So that's how they force the, the ripening of the grain. At the same time, it dries down the grain so that if it's kept in a way that could otherwise get moist and moldy, that's eliminated. And at the same time, it does what farmers call staging, meaning it kills the weeds that could emerge the next year. So it accomplishes a lot for farmers. And um, unfortunately, it is not, it's a disaster for health. Because if you look at the amount of glyphosate residues in oats, which are just sitting there saying, don't spray me, I'll absorb, but darn, it absorbs all the glyphosate. It's higher than Roundup Ready soy and corn. Um, it's they're, they're, the grains and the beans in particular. If you buy hummus in the United States that's not organic and not, not even if it says non-GMO, if it's not organic, it may be sprayed with high levels of glyphosate, the chickpeas, the peas, the mung beans, all the grains. So we don't have a comprehensive list because the US government decided not to do a comprehensive testing of all the products for herbicide residues, like they do for all of the other herbicides because they're friends with Monsanto, now Bayer, and they have ignored our health because they believe, oh, it's all safe. So we actually applaud all of the organizations that are doing independent analyses of basic fruits and vegetables and grains, as well as finished products, brand name things. So like, the Environmental Working Group did a bunch of oat-based breakfast cereals, and uh, there was a laboratory in Iowa that does the testing, and they did a bunch of pro testing. There was a, a group in Canada, they did thousands. So what did we do? We created a report for you with all of them. Actually, Bethany created the report. Thank you, Bethany. Uh, thousands of people around the world are really appreciating your work. To, we've put together everyone's reports. In a, in a way that you can find which products in terms of finished products, you know, brand name products or which ingredients or, or produce are, have been tested and what the results are. Uniformly, organic tests less, quite a bit less than non-organic, but it's not always zero. Sometimes it's undetectable. Sometimes even a conventional crop is undetectable. But why would organic have any spray? Well, it turns out that the use of glyphosate is so prevalent that the U.S. Geological Survey found it in 60 to 100% of the air samples and the rain samples in the Midwest. 
In Mississippi, it was 75%. So when there's massive amounts of glyphosate being sprayed, some can end up in the atmosphere, some can get on the crops, through the water supply, through the rain, through the air. So you won't necessarily be 100% clean if you buy organic, uh, even those that protect themselves as well as possible, but you should definitely favor as much as possible those that are taking precautions so that your intake of glyphosate is as little as possible. So go to responsibletechnology.org and click on that report and take a look at it and consult with it later on because every time a new group does a, a testing, Bethany is on it, she'll add it to it, you'll get it, and that will keep us informed. In the meantime, oats, wheat, legumes, these things that have glyphosate in them, wine, beer, orange juice, uh, they have glyphosate residues, and you'll get a chance to check to see if it's particularly high by looking at the list. Did I get it all, or is there anything else to add, Bethany? That was great. Thank you. All right, and thank you on behalf of everyone for putting that together. Safe eating. <laughs>